Now you can also use the downstream keyers to do full motion graphics. Now this could either be motion graphics or you could do picture in picture effects using other live inputs coming into the TriCaster and compositing an output shot together. Let me show you how that works. Again, you have the ability to choose what the DSK is going to use as a source, either from the interface or here from the control surface. I'm going to choose DSK1 and I'm going to tell it that I want to use DDR number one. Now, DDR is a digital disc recorder. It's a media player, allows you to play back video clips, audio clips, and other media. But you can also use it as a source for the downstream key. Now, this comes in handy if you have video clips that have alpha channel in them. Now, this could be a video clip from any package. It could be from Lightwave, it could be from After Effects, any 3D package. Any package that can produce a video clip with alpha channel can then be brought in, that, that clip can be brought into the TriCaster and used in the DDR as an overlay. So, for an example, here in DDR number one, we have this clip, and this clip has alpha channel in it. So, I'm going to go ahead and queue it up, and I'm going to make sure that single and autoplay are turned on. Now, we'll talk about this a little more once we get into the DDR itself, but it is important that you understand how this works, even when you're just using this for motion overlay. So, single is just going to play the single clip that is selected, nothing else in the list. If single's turned off, it's going to play everything here like a list of clips. So, we want single on, we just want to run the one motion graphic, and autoplay is automatically going to start the DDR playing when you switch to the DDR or when you switch to anything that the DDR is attached to, including the downstream keys. So again, we've attached DDR1 to DSK1. I have the clip lined up that's got alpha channel in it. I have single and autoplay on. Now, we're simply going to hit take for DSK1. You can see we get a beautiful motion overlay graphic on top of program out. We let it run its course, and then you can even hit auto and use an effect to get rid of it. So it's a great way to do motion graphics. If you already have a motion graphics package that you're using, you should be able to import that into the TriCaster, use it in the DDR, and bring the motion graphics that you use in any other live production directly into your TriCaster live production. Now, instead of using motion overlay graphics, you may want to use another live input and do a picture-in-picture -picture effect. And this is possible as well. We're going to go to DSK1 and we're going to say we want DSK1 to use input number 4. Now, we're going to put V3 on both preview and program. Now, you can go to DSK1 in the positioner, go to position and scale, and start twisting the joystick and you'll see that input number 4 shows up. I'm able to scale it, position it. I'm going to do a little over the shoulder shot here for Kiki. Let's get that position and scaled where we want it. That's good. And then again, you have the ability to use transitions to transition that on and off the screen. Now, you also have the ability to use a keyed input in the downstream keyer. So the same inputs I'm using to fill our virtual sets with Kiki and Rex and so forth can be used as an overlay. We're going to say we want DSK1 to be input number one, which is Rex's input. Now again, I'm going to bring up my computer as an input. It's running a PowerPoint, and I can now begin to scale Rex, position him on this input wherever I want him to be, and he can be integrated into the PowerPoint presentation. We can go ahead and bring him in with an effect. He can talk about what's happening during the PowerPoint presentation. And then, of course, we can always use a different effect to take him back off the screen.